Hello everyone, we're right now in St. Mark at a clinic, a hospital uh, that was actually condemned. Uh, it was a hospital that was used for abortions and for terminally ill patients. But we believe God is resurrected to bring life and health, no more death. We've had teams here for the last couple of weeks coming in, praying over the place, cleaning it physically, and we've been doing a lot of mortar work now and, and preparation of this. We only have one hospital right now in St. Mark that's serving 270,000 people. That was before the earthquake. With the earthquake victims here, we already have over 5,700 new citizens of St. Mark, and we expect that by the time we finish registration, it'll be more like 10 to 15,000. With only one hospital, how is anybody getting the medical attention they need? So this is going to be a real answer. But right now, we're using it as a temporary shelter for Port-au-Prince victims until our tents arrive, where we can start assisting them with, with more temporary housing to move them into relocation places of permanent housing. But you'll see over here to my left, we have our kitchen crew. These are our kitchen. We're hired them, creating jobs. All this food right here has been purchased in the market. So so we keep the infrastructure structure and economics going in the city. These uh, ladies have been cooking wonderful, healthy meals for the, the victims and the patients that are still healing from the earthquake victims that are now here in the clinic. This move just happened today. Today's Saturday, and it just happened today. Over here, we're still doing some mortar work. They're mixing up the mortar, and they're patching in and filling in holes. We still got some work to do, but there was just no more time. We had to have the space, so we went ahead and moved them in. Here we are walking into the, the entrance door of the clinic. Uh, this clinic used to be a place where they said approximately 150, 200 beds were. Uh, this building was totally a disaster. You can see it now. It's been repainted. We've had mortar work done. Audrey's here right now. Audrey, what are you doing? Well, right now we're just moving the patients in. Uh, the, one, the refugees that we've had in the arena for the last two weeks getting them situated. Um, eventually, we will be opening this as a clinic to take in um, outside um, injuries from St. Mark or those still coming from Port Prince. Well, Audrey, as you have been entering people and re-registering and moving them from the Youth of the Mission campus to here, what has been the attitude? Are they happy with what they see here as they move in? Yeah. Um, there's still a little bit of concern because we're in a concrete building and because of what they've gone through with the earthquake, um, they're a little bit nervous about not being able to escape in a quick fashion. But um, otherwise, I think they're, they're pretty happy with what they're seeing. The use of the mission, we've come in here with uh, some trained masons and different people and we've established that this building is solid. In fact, we put in reinforcement. This whole wall here and some other posts on the interior here have been erected to give added strength and added support to guarantee that this place will stand strong if there is another earthquake. Even though now we are not experiencing any real tremors uh, since three weeks ago the earthquake hit. How many people do you think will be able to house here if we want to just use it for housing? Just for housing. Um, once the other, the other half is, is completed and, and painted, probably 150 or 200. That's incredible. Now this will be our temporary housing again until we can get some more uh, tents in and things of this sort so that we can re relocate them. And then as we do that, we'll be transitioning this from temporary shelter to full-blown hospital. If you know of anyone out there that would like to take on this hospital and see it re-kicked off, restarted, supplied with medicine, doctors, if you're out there, you know doctors, nurses that would like to come in and man the clinic, operate it. We need administrators. We need hospital administrators. These are all kinds of people. We have a clinic. We have a hospital here just waiting. We need people to man it. So if you're interested, uh, please contact, contact us at relief at ywmhaiti.org. Let's go look around and see what kind of renovations and changes we've had. Okay, this is an example of one of the things we had to do. We had to redo all the electric in this building. 
So we put all the electric in here. You'll see we got a new breaker panel. We've got switches. We got a generator. Right now we need an inverter. We're looking at 2,500 to 3,000 US dollars just to buy an inverter and battery. But this will allow this facility to have electric for utilities and things of that sort 24/7. Just need 3,000 dollars to do that to equip this hospital for this. As you see, everything is, seems to be functioning. We have our light bulb here that just is coming on, and then we also have a working toilet right back here. This place was absolutely a disaster. This was all full of all kinds of garbage and trash that I can't even say on video. But now it's got a shower in it, it's got a toilet, it's got a sink, we got the plumbing all done, we built a new septic tank. I mean, it's so exciting. Here over here is another one for a wheelchair or handicap situation thing. Right in here is where some of our victims are now staying. We have mats laid on the floor. We don't have beds yet. We need beds. We need sheets. We need everything that is needed to keep people up. We have people that are still sick, but they've been living on these mats since the earthquake and, and they brought them in here. Now, we need beds. We got containers coming in, but we have no hospital beds, no kind of beds at all on there. If you can help, if you can take that on as a project, that would be awesome. As you walk on through here, you'll see three more rooms. And these three rooms, there's also a bathroom down here. They've all been repainted and reconditioned. Now the other side of the hospital is still in work. Let's, join, let's go over there and take a look at how close it is from being finished. Here's one of the toilets in the other side that still need to be repaired. And actually I've just been told that we don't have everything we need to fix this. We still need to build a septic tank out the front. We still need to redo this and put a sink in the toilet here. We've got another one just on the other side here that needs to be done. Um, you'll see the walls, the tile had to be chipped off and the whole insides, all the, the uh, plumbing had to be redone. And we're just waiting on people and supplies. We need your finances. We can get these supplies actually here in Haiti. You can ship them in, but we can get them here in Haiti and get them the same day. We need some doors. We need people to come in and install doors. We don't have any doors. You'll see in here we have a large hallway that's a patient recovery ward that we're going to use in the future. But right now it's going to be a great place just to keep more refugees. Here's another part of the hospital that was built before it was closed down. Now this was a whole surgical wing of the hospital and emergency receiving. And you can see here what we've done is we have just totally redone the plaster and reinforced the roof. This used to show rebar and different things hanging out, but we've redone that, reconcreted the roof. Uh, you'll see everything around. We, we are ready to put this thing into action, but we've got to get in here with teams, clean up, get some windows in here, get some electric flowing in here. We need people to help us. We need electricians, we need carpenters, we need finances to finish this clinic and get it done. Well, it's time to eat now. They're all excited about eating. I want to come back and get a personal story of some of the situations that have happened here. Uh, there's one story of a mother who ran out the house and her three children were buried in her house. The eight-year-old eight boy dug himself out then his sister and they survived and then their little sister's here and then they began to help their mother. There's all kinds of incredible stories of survival in this little clinic and they're really thankful for how God has used Youth of the Mission to assist them in this time and hour. But the most of all, they're learning the love of Jesus Christ and they're accepting Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So this is Terry Snow talking to you from St. Mark Haiti at the new clinic that's being restored. A clinic that used to know, be known for death is now giving life once more because of Jesus Christ and everyone's participation.